Yes, last switch. Ah! Hello, Musto0063 here for Not Another Needle Games Secret Stages. Uh, and yes, I'm doing post commentary on these videos, and I've kind of, after about a couple of failed attempts to actually record post commentary on this, where I'm kind of appreciating that my commentary or post commentary on this tends to generally suck. I've just, yeah, I've decided I kind of take a, new, a different kind of tactic on this. So apologies for me for kind of talking and introducing that way over this first secret, but ultimately this one's fairly straightforward. It's the secret of stage one. Um, you expect it to be one of the easiest, and it certainly is. Effectively, it's a switch game exercise. So all you really need to do is make a beeline for the switch that you can see or you can clearly get to. Pay attention to the checkerboard or the, yeah, the red kind of checkerboard icon that moves when you hit a certain switch. See which path opens up that you can now go to. Get the switch in that area, backtrack, and so on and so on. There's really not uh, too much to this. So, oh yeah, and the, um, thankfully I actually completed this uh, to go after I just uh, had that embarrassing failure right here actually, or I have got the final switch. But yeah, this one is pretty straightforward and I probably don't need to say too much more about it. Um, for those of you wondering, and I'll try and do this for every single one, mention how long it took. Uh, this first secret didn't take, in fact, take me only three minutes to get. So yeah, what can I say? It's a swift getting exercise, it's the first one, and it's pretty straightforward. Now I could try and keep you in the dark for secret stage two, but I'll try and describe a little bit of what's going on. So apologies, this first screen is going to go by pretty quickly, um, but a lot of the gimmick to this, we'll get a chance to see it again because I'm going to have to backtrack later, but a main gimmick to this is obviously that you only have a spotlight around, the, around you and the rest of the screen is pretty much pitch black. Uh, this section here is just a maze section. It's very unthreatening. There's nothing really to die on. The only thing you really have to worry about is getting lost. Um, it's not immediately obvious where you need to go, which path you need to take, and unless you do know where you're going, it will take you a little bit of time to navigate through. But as I said, yeah, there's no spikes or obstacles or pits or anything like that, so just keep plugging away at it and eventually you'll find your way through. To what is the halfway point and a big yellow button. Push the big yellow button and on the way back we now have to get through the maze with spikes all over the place. Complete with annoying cliff jumps and the spotlight meaning you're in the dark and having to dodge all the or having to worry about all the spikes. Again when you know where to go it's not so bad. The path isn't exactly the same as it was on the way to the button so there will be some slight differences and there are a couple of irritatingly placed spikes um, including uh, this area at the top of the top of the screen here where you kind of have to jump off the screen uh, and then go back down onto other areas so those two spikes there for instance if you don't know they're there uh, certainly when you're first time playing it will be a pain and this cliff jump here or this cliff jump section here gives me a huge pain or gives me huge problems and is a huge pain <laughs> um, but, again, the spotlight is sufficiently big, and as you'll see kind of coming up here, I'm not quite sure where to go. But having dropped down a little bit on that little jump, I was able to see where the spike was underneath me and plan accordingly. So, the jumps, I'd say, are not all that straight, are not necessarily straightforward, but there's no real intricacy here. And a lot of the difficulty comes from, again, not seeing, you know, completely where you're able to go. But we're almost back out of the maze part. Nearly dying right at the end there before the uh, three-quarter point save point. That would have been irritating. And what the yellow button does is activate a bunch of these switches. So over here on, above the spike pit at the bottom, the yellow blocks appear, and we can now obviously stand on the yellow blocks and get the uh, green or get the spike secret that we couldn't previously have got before. So what I'm trying to do here on, uh, at the bottom here is again without knowing. I'm not being able to see too much. I'm kind of uh, trying to jump a bit to the right so I can see where the platforms are rising up in order to kind of time something nice in order for me to actually progress. You know, I think I'm going to die on the final bit. Yeah, always nice dying on the final jump. But uh, yeah, I think we're nearing the end of this one. 
the difficulty comes prob mainly from obviously not really being able to see everything. There are spikes around, there are platforms you have to worry about in time, but ultimately the intricacy is not all that bad, it's the darkness that causes the problem. Um, although this one did take me 12 minutes to complete, so yes, a significant step up in difficulty from the secret of stage 1. And unlike stage 1, this time you have to go back to the main area 2 in order to get the teleporter and progress. The stage 3 secret is probably one of the easier ones, or that's how I generally find it, and indeed that is exactly how it worked here. I've actually not cut any footage from this, this the, the entire run uh, is what you're actually seeing here, and in all it only took me two minutes to do. So yeah, that certainly lies on the side of it not being all that difficult, or certainly not for me. Um, but I have quite, I have good experience probably with the double jump, or the double jump replenishing mechanic, sorry, I should say, from Boshi and probably some other games as well. So yeah, the double jump replenishing mechanic is reasonably, fam you know, reasonably familiar for me, and uh, I don't find it all that uh, tricky to pull off. So the idea behind this is it's a collectible trial, so you have to get these green or possibly orange, I can't quite tell, one colour of the two. They look orange to me, which probably means they're green, but you have to collect uh, all five of them. If you look over to where the uh, spike is, or the sort of collectible spike, sorry, you'll see a uh, barrier with a number kind of counting down uh, as you get the collectibles. So I tend to start off at the top, um, getting the two there, then make my way down to the bottom uh, to get the two at the bottom, and finally make my way over to the right to get the one over there. Um, the bit at the top, if you do screw up, um, you can't really get back up there again. So you want to make sure that uh, you use the double jumps or uh, you know, to the full and don't uh, miss anything or you're going to be in trouble. Uh, and equally at the bottom, uh, I thought that was going to be a successful run, but apparently it's obviously not been two minutes yet. But uh, yeah, so this, um, well, I just died there again. I think hopefully if I do this successful, yeah, this one. Don't miss that collectible there. If you miss it, then you'll need to restart because you won't be able to get it again. Uh, the ones at the bottom again make use of the double jump. There is a switch up here that I just hit there to get rid of a spike on the bottom. You'll need to hit that. Uh, and again, as for these ones, make sure you just uh, yeah, get the double jump replenishers and don't uh, miss them. And don't miss them. If you miss them, you'll need to restart because you won't be able to get back up. So onwards to secret stage four. And for those of you who watched my uh, I Wanna Get Cultured uh, Let's Play will recognise the stage as being one, as being from, from there. But uh, it's a little bit, it, you may notice a few differences here, notably the bit at the bottom kind of area where the secret is. I'll come back to that when we come back to it as well. Also the fact that the screen here doesn't scroll, uh, it actually is screens of, its, screens of itself. So once I jumped off, and hopefully I'll do it this go again, uh, once I jump off to the uh, right of the, of yeah of this screen, I will appear on a completely new screen, and it, you know it wasn't a scrolling thing, so that's another difference. Um, but yeah, I did describe this in quite a bit of detail in uh, uh, I wanted in one I get cultured. But um, for those who haven't seen that or want a bit of a recap, the idea behind this one is you need to make your way all the way to the right. You might see again some outlines of a switch uh, that need you know some blocks that. Uh, we're going to be standing on when we come back, so obviously that uh, suggests there is a switch somewhere. So we need to get all the way over to the right using these double jump replenishers, and I think this is successful. Yes, all the way to the right, hit the green switch button, and then make our way all the way back. Um, this part looks pretty similar from memory. I haven't got, I want to get cultured um, completely memorized. Again, it's not scrolling on the way back, so we have to get onto, onto certain screens. Um, but um, annoying failing jumps aside, it's I've done it quite. I've done it reasonably recently, and you know, I want to get cultured. And I've obviously cleared it before, not in this game before as well. So again, I don't find this one too tricky. I actually found the one I want to get cultured slightly uh, more tricky. I do think it's got some slightly more awkward jumps uh, in that one as opposed to this version. Don't quite know why it's more difficult, but I just tend to find it that way. Um, but on this game, it didn't. It wasn't all that long. So um, again, I'm not sure whether I actually cut anything out here. Possibly not. It only took um, three minutes to do, and I think I've been talking for about two minutes on this. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, reasonably soon, that's uh, actually going to be uh, complete. But um, yeah, when we get back to the next screen here, yeah, assuming I don't die. Nope. You might notice the bit at the bottom here looks slightly different. I did die. That was really irritating. But anyway, I'll talk about it. The bit right before the. Uh, or the jump right before getting the secret, there is actually a um, wall-align mechanic, which I guess makes some sense. 
uh, in this stage anyway, because stage four, not another needle game, uh, uses the uh, um, wall line mechanic. So yeah, the bit at the bottom is very slightly different. You'll notice it here it is here on the end of that block. Wall line there, drop down the uh, diagonal spike shaft and you should be fine. So the secret of stage five, and it is of course the conveyor belt level. So we've got uh, conveyor belts all over the place and mystery blocks which change the direction of the conveyor belts and these conveyor block um, or checker block um, obstacles that are obviously coming out of the chutes and getting in our way on the conveyor belts. Um, this one is, well, you can see it's kind of split into two, which is um, much appreciated. A lot of some, or some, some of the other ones uh, all have been as well. So the secrets from stages uh, two and four uh, were split in half. One and three you had to do uh, all in one go, but I find them pretty easy, so I have no real problem with it. The intermediate save here is much appreciated. And uh, the difficulty in this comes from those checker blocks. Um, the normal conveyor belts and the spikes are not all that tricky to... Um, get around or deal with. It's the conveyor belts that uh, really kind of make things tricky. Um, of course the mystery blocks having uh, changing the directions of the conveyor belts, you've just got to kind of uh, watch out for that. But as you can see now, a lot of my deaths have come kind of the jump before we're actually kind of reaching the save in that there are spikes on the ceiling, it's uh, the conveyor belts kind of uh, you know, shorten and the checker blocks get in the way and uh, yeah, it can be a bit of a pain as well. Um, Overall, it actually only took me seven minutes to do, and um, that's not all that bad, actually, for me. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, it's only a one-screen thing, and that was incredibly close, by the way, there. I'm getting through to the halfway point, but get through I did. But, uh, yeah, anyway, seven minutes on this, I actually consider to be not all that, not all that bad. Um, as for the bottom half, um, you can see things are a lot kind of more um, intricate down here with the checker blocks, and particularly this bit here with the mystery block. So you have to kind of uh, get in between two of them, uh, and then uh, that will that will uh, um, make the conveyor belt go in a different direction. So you've got to really be prepared for that. Uh, it also gets rid of uh, a couple of block above my head, or just above and to the left of where the mystery block is. So that's our path out of it, out of the area now. But yeah, this bit here, getting in between the, the checker blocks and the the conveyor belts when they've kind of you know, switched directions and everything is really awkward. Particularly the bit actually as well where you have to fall off the uh, top conveyor belt onto the bottom. You might kind of notice that a couple of extra kind of con con uh, these blocks kind of shoot off and just make complicate the, the screen a lot. There's a lot of them on the, oh yeah, on the screen and it does make that bit uh, rather tricky. Um, when I finally do do it, and uh, I think it's hopefully coming up reasonably quickly, I didn't include a massive amount of uh, failure here, but uh, yeah, this looks fairly good, yeah. Um, just take your time on this uh, cliff jump, and uh, remember that you've pretty much got infinite goes at it. Provided you don't mess up and uh, panic and uh, fall down on the, you know, off the conveyor belt, then yeah, you've got infinite goes pretty much of that, and you should be fine. So, the secret of stage six. And this one is a pain, and I leave this first real outtake in here just to demonstrate the hitbox on the kid and uh, the water. I was clearly out of the water there. You saw his head kind of pop out, so uh, yeah, there's a yeah. The hitbox on this is slightly weird, but as it kind of set up there uh, on the text box, time to jump in the toxic water. So basically. We cannot stay in the water too long. It's uh, obviously slowly draining the kid's health, and you've obviously got to make use of the little areas. Uh, it was littered throughout the, air, the stage or the floor, or whatever, whereby you can uh, get back your pockets of air. So it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't the fact that you have to rush. In certain areas, you do have to be damn quick. There's a switch, obviously, down there, by the way, that obviously makes the fruit rise up. There's another switch that you would have seen. Uh, in toward the middle right area that will further raise the fruit um, i believe in a previous version of this possibly even this one although it doesn't look quite likely that you could actually jump between the fruit uh here without even the need to raise the switch uh, or get the switches and raise them up but uh yeah i think that looks to have been corrected uh on whatever version i'm playing here so that you can't do that which is a bit of a bummer but uh, oh well i guess that would be cheating um but yeah, a lot of the problems I tend to have are on this area to the far right. Um, just because, particularly this bit here, from going from the pocket of air up the top to getting the switch to getting back to the pocket of air up the top. It's very tight from a time point of view. Um, and yeah, you need to be 
very careful with all the sort of silver spikes around, and then they look. It looks like there's lots of room, but trust me, there tends not to be. And of course, I personally hate the mini spikes, so you and me all be absolutely fine with those, but for some reason for me, I absolutely detest and loathe the hitboxes on the mini spikes. Um, but yeah, this one is probably one of the trickiest for me. This actually took uh, 18 minutes to get, so uh, not quite uh, longer than uh, the one from uh, stage two by six minutes. It wasn't the longest one, and we'll be coming on to that in just a moment. But um, yeah, this one I just find uh, tricky. It's, an el it's obviously the element of rushing again. I've kind of said, and that spike there, the one I keep dying on there by rushing that last little bit, brr, really annoying. And I swear it doesn't look like I'm hitting it. But uh, yeah, the difficulty for me anyway comes from the rushing. I much rather have, a, have something where I can take my time, catch my breath, blah, blah, blah. Obviously I can catch my breath at certain points in time in these pockets of air, but you have far less time than, it, than you might actually think to uh, you know get to hit, get switches, get back to certain pockets of air and get out. Uh, but I believe this is a successful run now, so I haven't got too much more else to say on this. Just once you get down the rhythm, it's not too bad, but yeah, keep move quick and uh yeah it's 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 a pain but um it could be worse so secret stage seven and when you set the recorder off remember to collect the window so that you actually can play the game and the jump button registers so who's up for a death montage i hate loathe and detest this jump Seriously, this jump is the absolute bane of my existence on this flipping stage. This stage in total took 21 minutes to do, and I reckon I must have died probably at least 60% of the time on that one damn jump. Uh, and in case you're wondering why I broke up the death montage here, that's because the very next go uh, on this occasion I happened to have died on exactly the same bloody jump. Yeah, I hate this one. It's so tight. I don't know what it is about, about it. The low ceiling meaning I can't quite get a full jump or what, but... Oh, I hate that jump with a passion. It just drives me round the bend. And, of course, when you do it, the rest isn't so bad. This is one of the stages with a, with a red button, so again, we've got all the blocks. And, yeah, like I was saying, it's not too bad, but, of course, uh, I'm just so nervous and twitchy and paranoid that, although the rest really isn't all that bad, once you pull off that jump, of course, I'm going to screw up. Although thankfully I did only screw up once, having made this, having made the jump uh, past the black star, the, you know, the second time around when you hit the switch. But oh boy, oh boy! Uh, I believe we're done with the death montage now. But I don't, and I think this is the last two two minutes or so of me actually getting the secret. So I think I did include every single time um, that uh, black star uh, black star got me. But uh, yeah, other trouble spots are indeed the bit at the top uh, right. Uh, it was that, in that grey star area, um, because you only have a single jump at this point. At that point in time, having gone through the black star at the beginning, so pulling off that jump is harder than you think. And then getting the timing right for the double jump to get back out to the left is trickier than you might think. Um, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> I hate that one jump, but um, the rest, to be honest, is fine. But uh, yeah. I nearly screwed up the end there as well, by the way. I was just past that spike. I nearly screwed up again. <laughs> and you can see my excitement having cleared that stage. I, that's the worst one of the lot for me by far. So from the worst one to my personal favorite one. It's not the easiest by any stretch of the imagination. I would give that to either Secret Stage 1 or Secret Stage 3. But I really like this one. Again, it's, it's, it's stage eight, so it's the gravity switching one. So, which is probably absolutely my favorite of the, you know, of the stages we've done uh, so far from one to nine that you've seen. So yeah, I, I, I really do like this. And uh, obviously what we've got going on here is a um, infinite jump mechanic, um, or only at certain times. You obviously see um, at, uh, at other times we've got to go through a little barrier that has jump with a cross with a red cross in it. That obviously takes away your ability to infinite jump and you're back to a regular double jump. Um, so it's just, uh, it's kind of going between, you know, the infinite jump mechanic and back to normal. But um, yeah, this one's really fun. Uh, it does go on for a bit, as I kind of mentioned during the, uh, the Let's Play. So this is only the first screen of, um, of um, 
probably six. It's three screens, but you have to go there and back each way. Um, but that first part wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't so bad. In fact, the the whole of it's not so bad. I really do enjoy this one. Um, but here we are on part two of probably uh, six, and or yeah, oh, okay, we'll call it part two of six. Um, here we actually have all the uh, gravity uh, gravity switches again. Or on this one, we have three of the, three of the four anyway. Um, the first one we've got is a slow is a, is a slow is the slow gravity, and uh, that one really shouldn't be too too much of a problem. I'll die every now and then, but um, the fast one um, is probably one that's going to cause a few deaths, um, as is the one with the uh, high gravity. Um, but ultimately, particularly with the fast one, it's just getting the knack for the speed for which you need to go for need to go at it. Once I got past the fast one a few times, I found that I could kind of do it reasonably frequently, and I was you know, what was getting me um, more for the knot was the one area with the high gravity, as you saw there. I don't know if I actually cut anything, cut the part of that footage out, but yeah, um, the fast one once you get a rhythm down for it is not so bad, and uh, it ended up being the high one I think that caused me yeah, the most deaths. And I was so close there, uh, but I think I think uh, next time I, I get up there, I will indeed get off this screen, and uh, we will see a low gravity area. So that will be the red gravity. Pretty sure it's this going to be this go. Yep. Um, so I guess this is part three of six, although no save really in between there. And this bit's really not all that bad, provided you don't screw up horribly on what was a mini spike. Yay! Um, but. That bit's really not that difficult, but I suppose part of it is going from the high gravity to the low gravity in fairly uh, quick, you know, fairly uh, quick succession. So uh, that can be a bit of an, an, a thing to get the handle on, but ultimately that that last bit shouldn't be too much problem. Uh, and here we have the uh, blue button. Um, so that is all the buttons got. We've now got um, yeah all the buttons: the yellow one from stage two, the green from stage four, the red from stage seven, and the blue from stage eight. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously what the blue button does, again, as with the other ones, is put a bunch of blocks up and we now need to get our way back. And the, one, not, and the, good, and the really nice thing about this is, on our way back, we no longer have the ability to uh, infinite jump. We're back to our standard regular double jump. Um, and it's kind of a nice kind of thing to go all the way to, to go back on here. I, I, I find actually some ways going back more fun than going to, going to the button. Um, it's easier, I think, uh, in general. Uh, I, don't have the exact splits with me, but I think it must have been probably somewhere in the region of six and a half minutes to uh, uh, to get there and, f and three and a half um, to get back, something like that anyway. Uh, it was 10 minutes overall in case I hadn't already said that, and I'm pretty sure this must be the successful run to get to, to clear the um, fourth and fifth bits. So we're now at the, final, uh, the final save before actually clearing the area. And I have one death, um, uh, before I actually make it, so not long left uh, on the stage at all. But yeah, it's it, once you get once you get the button activated, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's nothing here that's all that really all that tricky, or certainly for my money. But uh, yeah, overall a really fun, enjoyable stage. Albeit going on for a little while, but um, since I really like it and enjoy it, I have no problems with that whatsoever. So last but by no means least is the secret of stage 9 and you saw about a minute or so of it uh, in uh, part 13 because I accidentally forgot that I was uh, saving them for, for separate videos. I got so excited about having cleared the stage and, and then just kind of showing you where it was that I uh, kind of... Uh, well there's less of a transition here so it felt more like just like a regular stage but so yeah apologies for showing that off in the previous bit but yeah. Um, you've got a minute there, you've probably got about two and a half minutes or so here. It only took four minutes in total to beat, so it's not at all that all that bad a one. And there's a very generous kind of a halfway save point. This isn't pretty much indeed the only screen uh, that you can see. The secret is off on the next screen, but it's right at the big, you know, there's nothing else in the next screen, so this is the only screen. It's pretty short, there's a midpoint save, so yeah, it's not all that tricky. Um, and it's kind of a nice one to end on, really. Um, so... The idea being that you have to hit a couple of switches. They will um, do certain things like, uh, well, they'll get rid of some of the mini leaks. Um, you obviously see that the first switch I need to get off to is to the one on the uh, bottom right. That will get rid of the leak uh, in the in the way of the switch on the um, bottom left or bottom middle, depending on which way you want to look at it. That, in turn, will then get rid of the leak that's directly or to the left and below of the save. Um, 
and uh, once we've got to the halfway point there is a switch you can see at the top right uh, and that will get rid of the leak that you can clearly see is blocking well clearly see now since I died and I have to go off screen <laughs> clearly see, you can clearly see is blocking um, the path to the exit but uh, yeah a, a pretty straightforward one for last but I'm not going to complain um, stage 9 itself with the um, you know the wall banging mechanic and whatever is a is a uh, a bit of a tricky thing to get to grips with so I'm certainly not going to complain about having a comparatively easy, easy secret uh, to end with. Uh, I don't believe I died too much all on this uh, last little bit so uh, yeah that's probably about all I really wanted to say about all the secret areas so yeah they are for the most part fun seven and eight uh, sorry six and seven no eight eight is one of the best get me get my numbers right <laughs> six and seven are uh, for me anyway by far the worst but ultimately you know they're not, still not that bad and uh, yeah some a lot of them are really quite fun so uh yeah that's probably about all i was going to say so uh yeah this i think is a successful run so yeah i will see you uh next time part 15 when we will finally find out about the hole in the ceiling and what that's all about so until then cheerio